Welcome to the Alive Lauren podcast. And this is the place of celebrating juicy, soulful, whole living. And whole living is the embracing of, of all of it. And even the stuff that's really hard and really challenging and that we may not want to look with, look at, and we may not want to be with, and we may not want to sit with. But just being with all of it. Just like, yeah, like sometimes people do. People read very tragic novels and they win, like, awards and they get recommended and yeah just like the whole the whole of life in all of its genres and currently so I am um, living in Israel and yeah just being here in the middle of everything and I personally am not somebody who's very well aware of the ins and outs of all the history Um, what I can say is the little bit that now that I listen to and hear and see, there seems to be, you know, everyone has their point of view and their story and their evidence. And I kind of feel that the more, yeah, at some point there is an objective truth. Um, But yeah, it just also seems that along the way, history can be painted very differently depending on the exact, like, selection of evidence that's chosen to be put to the forefront, what's been chosen to not include in the story Um, and I think for me the biggest thing is kind of this move away from from a right and a wrong not, like it's just the idea that I don't know, it just gets quite challenging in terms of sharing what I mean um because Buckminster Fuller has this quote that you never change. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And it just feels like this constant fight over, over rightness and suffering and who suffered more. And it just like... It doesn't end. I don't know. The, the eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. It really does. It's just... I don't... It feels like violence and retribution and... Not that that's necessarily the route that's going here in terms of retribution. It's just more like violence on violence just feels like... It just perpetuates like a cycle. And it feels also like extremists... And well, like followings are born out of very desperate circumstances and situations and trying to move to a place where people are empowered to have a quality of life. Oh, yeah, because I really don't believe that the majority are the voice of the extremists. And something that rings true for me that I just... Another sort of quote that's... Um, a Mandela quote that no one, no one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin, their background, or his religion. People must learn to hate, and they can learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. And that's the world I'd like to believe in, and that's the world I'd like to envision, a world where no one is born hating and people do learn to hate and just as you can be taught to hate you can be taught to love and that love does come more naturally to the human heart than its opposite you know we can all choose the world that we envision and we believe we live in and I don't know what the answer is it's just when it seems there's also like a mix of restraint like when people when someone is diagnosed with a cancerous tumor then there is a strategy of cutting out, like to save the person. If the cancer, if the part has gone cancerous, that it's so disidentified with the whole of the human being that now it's just like growing at a mad race rate. And it's, yeah, the one explanation of cancer that I've heard that's always rung really true is, you know, most cells have a consciousness of being part of a body, of a whole even though they may be very different and even though they may look different and carry out very different functions, they have some knowing of being part of a whole. 
Whereas cancer cells seem to have, like, have an identity of being separate, that they're alone and they're not part of something. And then they're so isolated that they feel they're, they have to create community and then they breed and breed and breed because they feel like they're all by themselves and they need to create some world with some sort of sense of community when if they actually just realized so you know you have two sides you have stories of spontaneous remissions where people have got cancers and growth and they do and often those stories are where people have connected to surrendering so actually the the not knowing sometimes when I comment and say like I don't know what the new model is I think there's actually a strength in the humility of not knowing and being open, being open to an unfolding, being open to a direction. Because in I'm just sharing of things that I know from things, they're not things that I know, they're just things that I've experienced from things that I've read. That the people that experience the spontaneous emissions, they reach a place of surrendering to something beyond them and not being in control and being open to a force greater than them. And then you have others where you have documented cases of healing centers where it's been recorded where someone has a tumor and while it's on like a sonogram or one of these electronic devices where you can see the tumor, you know, the, the monks or whoever are trained there are trained to such a degree of focus to see the person in a state of wellness. And as they all are resonating and seeing this person in a state of absolute wellness, you know, like the tumor shrinks. And this has been documented cases. And then you've got other, not that there's a right and a wrong, they're just different approaches to handling something where someone has a cancerous tumor and then it is actually physically cut out and removed. And so, you know, I don't know if we add a world that if you do that analogy that we have the capacity to imagine to hold space and focus to see like a group like Hamas from a place of whole love and acting from a place of compassion and love in their hearts. I don't know, I don't think we're necessarily in a place where enough of us have been trained to do that. So like when you have the approach of removing a cancerous growth, like something that's detrimental because it's, it's just destroying, but what's sad is like we're one humanity. So just on that vein of like when there is a cancer growth to be removed, like if that is the route that's been taken now, just to remember our compassion and our love and our humanity in the in the most loving, compassionate sense of the word. That I've read articles about talking about practicing like restraint, just not to you know however dark somebody else may sink to in the things that they do and the acts that they perpetrate it it has to stop in terms of you have to feel the pain to the extent that you cause my pain because if you do that like we never get out of this something has to switch something has to switch away from you have to be as painful as you made me for stuff to change and I just remember also like a Rwanda story of also like a young woman who hid during the Rwanda genocide when the other group came through her village and slaughtered her whole family and she hid for days. And when she eventually came out, she came out to the scene of like a slaughtered village. And she just was so fueled by desire to never have this happen again, that no one should ever experience this again. And she was met with a lot of resistance because a lot of people just wanted retaliation and they wanted vengeance and they wanted retribution. And she was so fueled by not wanting anyone to have to experience, it didn't matter who they were. And please God, we can find a way, a way forward in that, a way forward in love, a way forward in compassion, a way forward in not wanting anybody, anyone to suffer the brutality and the trauma on any side to build a world where that doesn't happen again. Yeah, and to just realize like things, wow, what has to happen to a person to get to a place? What do they have to go through to desensitize to the point where they're willing 
no one, I really don't believe. I don't believe any baby is born with such hate in its being that it grows up just naturally uninfluenced to do the kind of things, the most like brutal of things that have transpired um, when Hamas sort of invaded Israel recently. And that goes back, there's been other times and other times where, through the history and generations where brutal things have been done. And I, I really, in my heart of hearts, I cannot believe that it just happens just like a natural unfolding. Things must happen that get a person to such a place over such, and it doesn't justify it. It just like explains, like, yeah, please God, to live in a world where more and more people are just given. We create a world like, because we are, we are one. And just to end on this note of diversity, you know, so much of the natural world that we look at, even if you look at just one human body, there is so much diversity in the cells. There's heart cells which are completely different to liver cells. And each body, every each system, nervous system to your digestive system, the systems are different. And the organs within the systems are different. So even when you have a respiratory system, Every part that plays part of that system is not the same. And then even when you have an organ like the lung, not every lung cell is the same. It's like the world screams, diversity is your essence, like diversity is what is life, what flourishes. It's not about, and it's about coexistence, and it's things right next to each other, right next to each other. And there are times that not everything is always all together, but it's all together in a way that it still coexists. So when you have the lining of the gut, which is one cell layer thick, one, one cell layer, and there are things that should not cross the gut. It's not that everything should go everywhere, but it's only one cell layer thick. So there's a place for everything. There's a place for togetherness. There's a place for each individually having its own place of self-expression. It's just if we just look at the natural world, it constantly is that diversity and some way, shape, or form of coexistence and collaboration, like need to exist, some balance of everything. So please, God, to just stay open to a new model, honestly, and to break the cycle, to break the cycle. And if if force is necessary, like it just is, like sometimes somebody has to be restrained. If if someone is. You know, like if there is like a breakout of some um, brawl, you know, then they break people apart and you restrain somebody. But yeah, to do it with, with I guess what the word is, is with restraint if force is necessary. And just always to remember our humanity and ugh, to meet in that place beyond right and wrong. Oh, sending so much love and just sending out blessings of imagining holding space for a model that makes the old model obsolete. Sending so much love.